Welcome to my shop. These COVID times, it's tough to get together. So leadership's been looking around trying to figure out how we can kind of uh, still spread some of our knowledge or what we do. You know? And uh, one way I did it is that we're going to make these little short series of uh, tips and tools or your favorite tool and a tip to go along with it. So for me, uh, I looked at uh, beading. All right. So if you've never beaded before, uh, putting a bead on something like this uh, really makes all the difference in the planter. You can just see it. So, and uh, you can probably do it with the original beading tool, which is a spindle gouge. This is a 3 8 spindle gouge. And yes, you can make that bead after some practice with that one. However, if you're going to make a lot of beads or you want to make consistent beads, uh, looking at beading tools is really the way to go about it. Uh, now, I don't think you're ever going to bead this with a, a gouge, just saying. Right. So I'm taking a look at uh, what it took me to find the right beading tool and uh, what you can do with it and how you can use it and some tips to go along with it. So let's dive into that. So when I first started looking for uh, beading tools, I went cheap. Uh, I think I paid 50, 80 bucks for the uh, Benjamin's Best bead cutting tools. Uh, there's four of them in there, three, six, eight, and ten mil chisels. And uh, they did okay, okay? I mean, this is what they look like. And I'll show you that this one a little later. They do cut okay for one bead. The problem is they, they leave a, a very large edge because they're not very thin right here. And then sharpening is another issue is because how do you sharpen that because this is the bead right here all right so if you can't sharpen that with something a round stick or something you're you're kind of screwed you can do this you can thin the sides down and i thought about doing that to get a, a more perfect bead but then you lose meat right here and, and the problem with that is it's it's not going to hold up right so they're great they're in two um i don't know they're okay and and i used them for one or two beads and I, they were okay but when i started to get a little bit more serious about doing some beading I looked around to see what I had, and, and um, it, it was like hands down that you went to D-Way tools. Right? So the D-Way tools are the stuff right, that beading is made for. Okay, so the box doesn't come with those. That's a cigar box I picked up at the uh, cigar store and made a little mods to put it into it. I still gotta do a little few more mods to it. I don't like it. But, uh, so here's the D-Way tools. And if you look at those, all right, they are different. All you have to do is sharpen this edge right here, and it will go back and stay sharp until you get way back here, which for me is probably forever. But you can do it a couple of ways. And then the quick way is you buy a stick from uh, Woodworking Wonders. This is just a, a CBN stick. And you simply tap it on that end, roll it forward, and slide it back and forth. And now you've got a nice sharp edge on either end. If uh, you think it needs a little more than that, you can take it over on the wheel, set it at the proper angle, rotate it over, take a light cut off because you don't want to lose the material, all right? And you're back sharpening uh, or cutting at a very, very sharp angle. Now, these are kind of pricey. I think I paid more for one of these than I did for all four of the best tools, but I've used these a lot more. And I've got several sizes uh, in there that I use. Uh, cover the range. Basically, I went into doing some um, uh, basket of illusion beading, and I, I needed some for that. So the, the beading tools themselves are pretty cool. I like those. But what I found out I, like, I use a lot is uh, this tool right here. It's a simple point tool. Uh, it's called a diamond tool, and man, is it! Uh, it's very easy and nice to use. I, I was trying to make some very, very small beads for a friend of mine who wanted a whiskey stopper that uh, mimicked his uh, bagpipe drones. There's three of them on there. And he didn't want one of those. So what I did is I was making this, which is my only prototype of it. I sold him the three of them. But these beads down in here, they don't make one that small at D-Way. And the only way I was able to do it was to use this tool to come in here and cut each one of these. Uh, by eye, which is okay. It turned, it turned out nice. He loved them. In fact, I probably could have sold more of them, but uh, I'm really not in the business. I actually like doing things. All right. So that tool, i.e. the uh, 
this point tool is very good. And they're, they're actually, they're all the same. They're 50 bucks a piece, no matter what you buy. Uh, but I didn't go in and buy them all. You could. They're like three, $400 for a set, something like that. What I did is I ended up doing onesie twosies as I needed them. I started buying some. And uh, I found I, the more I bought, the more I liked. So I'm a tool junkie, and this is just another tool. So it was really kind of cool. So anyway, it sells a handle. And I think I got one a 12 inch. I probably should have got a shorter one. But uh, this is what I bought to go with it. Uh, it's kind of nice. You can, this, this little knob allows you to loosen and take and change them back and forth, which personally, I don't use this when it sits over in my desk drawer over there. They're about 15 bucks, okay? But uh, I found that this tool was just too big for these little bitty things, okay? And it was unwieldy. I wanted something a little bit lighter. Uh, so it, so at first, of course, being the guy that I am, Rudy, Rudy Lopez helped me out on that one. This is a Jimmy Clues half inch uh, gouge that I bought when I was in his class and it fits perfectly in that D-Way uh, handle and it's uh, set up for 40 degrees, okay? Um, so you can use them like this and I do often, I'll grab them rather than handle them and I'll use them like this one. This one I usually don't, okay? But the rest of them, you can do them by hand. You don't need a handle for it. Um, however, I was at the uh, Florida Wood Symposium. And they had a junk dealer over there. They had a bunch of uh, stuff that uh, he was selling. And, and I found this, okay? And if you look around, you can probably find them. I don't know where you'd find them now, but I found this one. And, and this thing uh, was 375 or 3 eighths of, or, yeah, 3, 3 eighths in there. And these are 390. He does, I don't know why he does that, probably because he wants to sell you the handle. But uh, unbeknownst to him, this aluminum thing is uh, very easy to ream out. And I had some reamers that were 390, perfect fit. So I put them in there and I reamed this out to 390. Now this is the uh, perfect handle for D-Way tools. I just stick them in, tighten them both down and voila. I've got a nice handle, it's lightweight, I can control the bottom, and I really do like using this one uh, on almost everything uh, that, I, that I use, so particularly this one. I keep this one set over to the side and I use it quite often. You know, I, I did say you can make one of these, and I did make a point tool. Uh, this is just a piece of board stuck in there, and all I did on that one was uh, just cut a triangle on it, and, and it works pretty good, and every now and then I use that when, I, when I'm just like, I want to use a different tool because I like tools, all right? But I'm always back to the uh, to the D-Way Diamond Point tool because it really works pretty cool, all right? So those are the tools that uh, I'm going to show you in a second. This is a, uh, a Benjamin Best 2 mil. Uh, I think if you're doing a, a big bead for a bowl, it's probably not bad. Now this is the equivalent to a D-Way tool. So I can get up in there without you seeing it. both make a good tool a good bead for one bead okay but as I'm going to show you if you're going to do a bunch of them I don't think the uh, cheaper tool is the way to go so if you're going to do multiple beads let's say a bunch across there um, this is something that uh, Harvey Myers I picked up from him. Uh, 
on how to do it. You don't just plunge in, do one, plunge in, do one, plunge in, plunge. What you do is you want to lay your first one out, all right, like that. And that's another thing I like about the D-Way tools. They got these really sharp pieces right here. Now, before you get it completely formed or even started to be formed, you come back and you pick up the next one. And then you pick up the next one. And then you pick up the next one. And the next one. And the next one. And then, now you can come back and you can come in here and do your first feed. Which is just a little rock. Is all it is. And now the next one, when I get to pick that one up, I've already got two nice valleys to follow. And I get two good beats, two good looking beats, okay? Two good looking beats, okay? So that was a cool tip. Uh, I was plunging them straight in and doing them one at a time. And what would happen is you'd hook this one over here and it would slide and you get a little back cut and it just it was uh didn't do good once i learned this little trick i can put multiples across there as long as i take my time works like a charm so the next thing i learned about beading was uh really the beads themselves if you're only going to make one bead it really doesn't matter if you put it on the side of a bowl it really doesn't matter you just want to get it sort of there however if you're doing like a, a basket of illusion or something like that you really want a fully formed bead and in fact what you really want is a fully formed bead no matter what you're doing so you can practice it which I've done to get a fully formed bead I don't know if you can see it or not but if you stick this thing in there you can actually look at it and see that all sides of the tip touch and that's a fully formed bead <clears throat> however when you're doing a bunch of them it's kind of hard to do so one of the tricks that uh, I picked up from Harvey was uh Let's take your, your piece that you're doing, and let's come out here and actually I need to do those because I'm probably not going to do all of them, all right? And I just put a little pencil mark all the way in, okay? And I color it just so I know what I'm doing, okay? So now I've done, uh, I've marked it down. And what I can do now is shut it off and bring this back up right we want it about like that I think because that's what the that's what the dealer says okay let me turn it up speed it back up and now if you go into here and you want to form a bead like right here all right you rock it back and forth and you keep turning until the pencil goes away, and that tells you you have a completely formed bead, okay? Pretty cool, huh? And then you just keep going until you get all your beads done. And all of them are done. Sometimes I go back and I might touch them a little bit, very lightly, just to make sure I've got all the beads formed. And there you go, I've got all the beads formed. All right? It's a very cool tip if you need fully formed beads or any kind of beads. Uh, works pretty nice. And now once you've got all your beads formed, now you simply come back in and you start your just a tad. You feel good to me. So you come back in here and you just want to catch that edge, make a mark, and walk your way across. Just a plunge move, nothing major. And now you can come back, and you'll see right there, that's not a completely formed bead. So what we want to do, I'll rock it back and forth and the pencil's gone. And you'd be amazed that if you don't have that pencil mark on there and you didn't practice it, 
you'll have a lot of beads that are partially formed. And if you're doing a burn on them, that becomes, uh, that becomes very tricky. Make sure, light touch, nothing major. Any scratches I got, let's get them out. Oh, see now that one rode, that was a skate. But what you can do, you can take the skates out by simply making it slightly bit deeper, okay? And that's what that actual marking does too, it keeps the skate from happening. I've got a piece right here, and I wanna just really kinda of roll that edge over. Now, yeah, I could do that with something else. But this thing just allows me to come in and do a little bit of rolling. And I can just soften that edge right there. And it makes for a nice one. And then, also what this is good for is if you want to make small beads, you can put them in. Just a little more harder to do. But not that hard. And you can get some itsy bitsy. Bring it over to the bench grinder. Set this up for 25 degrees. And then I bring it on up just nice and smooth and slow. And lightly cut it. Until I get uh, a nice shiny surface. Okay? Thank you.